there we go. Oh, you went down. There okay. we go. Okay, no, that's all right. Test, test. Testing. Test. 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 All good? Yeah. Test. All right good. on. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Junipero Serra High School, home of the CIF San Diego Section Division II and Division IV Soccer Championships on CIFSanDiego.tv. We just watched the girls' Division IV final between Francis Parker and Coronado, and it was the Islanders of Coronado coming out on top with a 3-1 victory to take home the girls' Division IV title. And now it's the boys' turn. Same two schools, Francis Parker Lancers and the Islanders of Coronado. And the boys of Coronado will see if they can make it his and her championship trophies while the Francis Parker boys will try to exact a little revenge on behalf of their girls team. Hello, I'm Mark Grumman with my broadcast partner, Tomas Urtasen, and we have a clear, beautiful, sunny day in the mid-70s here in San Diego. And Tommy, this figures to be a great matchup of two very good soccer clubs. Yeah, it sure does, Mark. The Lancers of Francis Parker come into this contest with an 18-1 and 3 overall record and sported a 7-0 and 1 league record to win the Coastal Conference Championship while averaging over five goals per game and allowing less than one goal per game in league play. The Lancers have four players who scored at least 16 goals this season, so they like to share the ball. Senior captain Ryan Kretz and junior captain Patrick Barba led the way with 18 goals apiece. The Lancers beat King Chavez 2-0 in the quarterfinals and then held off Modern Day by a score of 3-2 in the semifinals to reach this championship matchup against Coronado. Meanwhile, the Coronado Lancers come into this game with a 20 Two and one overall record and finished 8-0 on their way to a freelance conference championship. The Islanders average over three and a half goals in a game in league while allowing a paltry .375 goals each game. To get this championship game, the Coronado beat Holtville 2-0 in the quarters and High Tech High 3-1 into the semis. Yeah, Tommy, we have two teams here that are used to scoring a good amount 
and uh, holding their opponents to little or no score at all. So it's going to be really interesting to see who dictates the flow of this game and eventually comes out on top. We're going to take a break and honor our country with this uh, with the, with the national anthem, and we'll be back after this. All right, we're back, everybody. Uh, so glad you joined us here on San Diego or CIF San Diego TV. We got the boys' Division Four soccer championship game just about to get underway. Francis Parker in their gold and gold jerseys and their white shorts, matching up against Coronado Islanders in our all white with the green numbers. And uh, we're just about to set. Coronado appears to have won the toss and will kick off. And uh, Tommy, it's going to be interesting to see who sets the tone early on. These are two really good defensive squads, so it'll be fun to watch uh, as the game unfolds. Yeah, what, what else could you want today, Mark? I mean, it's a beautiful day here in San Diego. We've got two awesome teams squaring off, and it should be an exciting game. The crowd's really getting into it, so we're going to look forward to a great game here. Coronado's going to kick off, and let's get it going. You got coach, head coach Seth Tunick for the Francis Parker Lancers. Brian Hyatt Alou, head coach of the Coronado Islanders, and we are underway. Nice high kick from the goalie of Francis Parker. Little battle at midfield, and now into the Coronado into the field. Francis Parker on the attack. And nice defense there by the Coronado defender to fend him off and take the ball away. Goes out of bounds, and it'll be a throw in for Coronado. Battle around midfield for the ball. Coronado takes control of it. Showing a little patience, and then the ball's kicked up into the other half of the field. Yeah, so far, Mark, it looks like both these teams are feeling each other out, uh, kicking the ball back and forth a little bit. Now Coronado gets a little bit of possession, and let's see what they do with it. They're going to try to work it inside, 
to some of their key forwards as they pass it around back. Yeah, showing some good patience, the Islanders. Just looking for an opening, looking for a place to get the ball in and maybe start an attack on the goal. Ooh. Battle for the ball taken by Coronado. Yeah, both very, very skilled squads here. Coronado looks like they have a bit of a height advantage in some areas. Let's see if they utilize that on some corner kicks coming up here soon. Yeah, ball's up in the air too. They can get up there and get their head on it above the Francis Parker Lancer players and hopefully direct it in their favor. Throw in coming for the Islanders. Got Nathan Anderson throwing it in for Coronado on the Coronado side. We've got a warm day out today. There's tents set up shielding the heat from a lot of the Coronado sideline. Nice. Let's see if that becomes a factor. Nice goal! And head, doubly headed in there and the goal. What a great throw into this right in front of the net by Anderson. Wow, Riley Peterson coming up big. What a goal there. Two deflections and a header into the goal to start off the game. Just a quick two and a half minutes into this game. What a what a play by Riley Anderson. Just fantastic. And, and just again, the, the throw in was, fan, was just a strong throw right in front of the net. You got a bunch of bodies in there battling for the ball. Coronado gets head on it twice. And the second one puts it in the net. So we're one to nothing. Coronado just a little over, well, about three minutes into the ball game. And the Islanders strike first. Yeah, Mark, they weren't waiting for anything there. They went right after it, and they looked to, to continue the momentum the girls' team had in carrying through. And we'll see if they can keep this up. Looks like Francis Parker is going to go on the offensive here. Yeah, smelling blood early. They want to they keep the attack on, get a little distance in between them and the, the Lancers. Ball's going to go to Francis Parker. Francis Parker in their gold jerseys going right to left on your monitor. Coronado in there wi all white going left to right on your monitor. Francis Parker with ball control here on their half of the field. But Coronado doing a great job of keeping the ball out of the box and playing some solid defense. Got a man down on the... One of the Coronado Islanders down. Had a nice collision over there on the far side. Can't see a number. If we get that, we will uh, let you know who that is down there. You can watch highlights of a, or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right here on CIFSanDiego.tv. Click on Buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFSanDiego.tv. Still trying to get a number on that injured Coronado player, but he's up and going, and we are back underway. Expect a nice physical ball game out there between these two clubs. Strong defensive teams, uh, so you know the, uh, the aggression level is going to be high. Ball centered in front of the net and kicked back out by Coronado. And the ball's gonna go to Co Francis Parker. Oh, oh. Foul on the play, throw in for Parker. Parker's free kick. All right, take that back, a free kick from the side, right around the 20. Looks like Adam Wright and Patrick Barba are both lining up. Looks like Barba's gonna take the kick now. Actually, now we have Ryan Kretz coming over. One of the captains looked like he said, this is going to be mine. So we'll see what he does with it. We got two Coronado Islanders lining up with the wall and a, and a scrum of, of both Islanders and Lancers lining up on the far side of the field. Yeah, Barbara and Kretz were the team leaders in goal score this year. Both had 18. Kretz had 47 points to Barbara's 41. Centered kick headed out by Coronado. Great defense but still kept on their half of the field by Francis Parker. Throw in by Francis Parker into traffic and defended well by Coronado. Coronado clears it to the other side of the field into the attacking zone. And 
back out, being showing some patience, which with a one nothing lead, you can show a little more patience and not have to be as much on the attack. You can pick your spots. Yeah, you're right, Mark. Coronado's style may be transferable from the women's team as well. It looks like they have the same formula of ball possession uh, as we saw as the previous game as the women control the ball majority of the game. And it looks like the men are trying to do the same thing as they break down the field here. Yeah, the Coronado girls did a fantastic job. They kind of struggled a little in the first half. They played well, but just couldn't seem to make anything click. But, boy, they came out in the second half, scored three big goals, controlled the game the entire second half to take home the title. So congratulations to the Coronado Islander girls, the newly crowned Division IV CIF soccer champions. And out of bounds, it will go to Francis Parker. We're at the 32-45 mark here in this first half. Coronado Islanders with a 1-0 lead on a beautiful inbounds and header goal. Riley Peterson responsible for that. It was a fantastic throw in, and Riley Peterson was the second guy to get his head on the ball and knock it into the goal for the Islanders. Ooh, nice collision out front. Boy, it's a nice physical ball game going on right now. Great stop by the goalkeeper, and wow. he dives on it to keep control. Great play there by the keeper. We had number nine, Kyle Koshland, following up that kick, looking to clean up. But uh, the defender, the goalkeeper for Francis Parker made a great play and jumped on that ball before he could get there. Yeah, that's Sean Nafasi, 6'3", junior. He'll be back next year. He had 11 saves versus Modern Day last, uh, last game in the semifinals when they beat them 3-2. Foul called. Foul called against Coronado, so it'll be a free kick for Francis Parker. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, fatigue and the heat's going to play a factor in this game, Mark. In, in the previous game, as we had mentioned, the, the Coronado Islanders women team had a great strategy of a lot of substitutions. And, and as the day wears on, it's getting warmer out here uh, on this synthetic field. We'll see if they do transfer a lot of people in and out of the game and maintain somewhat of an energy that can keep them putting the pressure on Francis Parker here. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. And, and you know, we're up, up high. We got a little breeze blowing. But down on the field on that turf, the, the temperature is quite a bit higher. Feet get hot, bodies get hot, and uh, it'll be a test to see who can endure. Coronado gets possession of the ball and will throw it in and see what they can do with this possession. Defended by Francis Parker to the center of the field. Coronado heads it out and again gets control and advanced into, up into the field, kick to the center. Shot is deflected by the defender and out of bounds. Ball back to Coronado. Yeah, that was Patrick Barba there, really stepping up and making a big time play. He looked like he had a, a clean shot at the goal. Uh, Barba looks to have a good game defensively to hopefully slow down these Islanders who seem to be on the attack so far. Yeah, they do, they're smelling blood and they're really trying to attack some more. Keeping the ball in their half of the field, the attacking zone. Kicked up high. And a scrum for the ball taken by Parker. Kicked ahead, but misplayed by the Parker player. And now Coronado's got the ball in there again on the attack and There's knocked out of bounds by Parker. There's Barba again. He seems to be all over the field. He seems to want this one. Yeah, one of the captains. He's a junior this year, so again, he will also be back. But uh, one of the team leaders, again, uh, leading the team. He and Kretz tied for the lead with 18 goals apiece. Uh, and certainly showing some nice defensive skill as well is Barba. Looks like the same play we saw earlier, but the result is not the same. Defended well by Parker that time. But Coronado maintains possession of the ball. Kick to the center. Patient passing by the Islanders. Now it's centered in front of the net, but headed out by Francis Parker defense. And that attempt goes far wide of the net, and Parker will get the Go ball. Go 
So Coronado comes into this game as ranked 35 in the state and 61st nationally. Um, and both teams are actually ranked in the top 100 uh, in the nation. So we'll see with Coronado's higher rankings, we'll see if that makes a difference in this game. Uh, they seem to be really putting some pressure on Francis Parker so far. Um, keeping that on will be a decisive factor in this game. Yeah, absolutely, Tommy. And, yeah, talking about rankings, uh, Parker started the season at 54th in the state, 93rd nationally, and they climbed all the way up to number 11 in the state and number 19 nationally by uh, just fantastic play. Ooh, and a little collision at the sideline, and the ball's going to go to Coronado and the throw, and we got a Francis Parker player who is down and hobbling. He's back on his feet, but not moving very well. Yeah, Colin Scott seems to be injured here. Then we'll see if they take a timeout and get him out. He's limping pretty good. Kind of liked him out there. He's still battling. He's in the, in the mix. And injuries tend to kind of wear off when you're getting in battle. The adrenaline takes over. Yeah, he's a smaller guy out there, Mark, but it, I don't think he has any lack of heart. He wants to win this one more than anything, it seems. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you've heard it said before, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And he's sure showing some fight. So we're glad to have everybody here with us. CIFSanDiego.tv coverage of the CIF Boys Division Four Championship game. And so far, it's been mostly Coronado in charge of this game, in control. They've got a one nothing lead. But Parker, Francis Parker is battling. The Lancers showing a lot of heart, showing some defense, and uh, they're in this one for the long haul. There's a lot of game yet to be played. Free kick for the Lancers. Right into the middle in front of the net and cleared by Coronado. Coronado just seems to be doing a better job of getting to those balls. You know, you mentioned their height advantage and that's certainly playing a factor. Those guys are able to get up and get ahead on the ball and, and clear it over the Francis Parker players. Yeah, so, so far we've had a lot of back and forth, um, kind of a mixed possession. The ball hasn't been staying on one side of the field more than the other. Uh, it's been a pretty evenly matched game besides the throw-in that that, uh, that Peterson put in, number two for Coronado. That seems to be the deciding factor at this point. Otherwise, seems to be pretty evenly matched. Uh, Francis Parker is showing a lot of heart, and their defense is staying strong. Yeah, as the game wears on, we'll see a little more of a clear picture of really what's going to happen in this game. You know, like you mentioned earlier, they're just kind of feeling each other out, getting an idea of what they can do against each other. Francis Parker will have the throw in. Parker went 7-0-1 in league, won the Coastal Conference Championship. They just rolled through their league's schedule. They averaged over five goals a game and only gave up about .8 goals a game. They scored as many as nine and eight against Horizon. They scored six against Santa Fe Christian, eight against Christian. So this team is used to putting some uh, some points on the board. Yeah, a lot of that credit goes to Coach Seth Tunick, who's been really preaching a lot of focus on maintaining a balance between offense and defense. And so far, their success in, the, in their league conference uh, we'll, we'll see if it translates into a CIF championship this year um, and split the, between the men and the women. I think it's kind of interesting how we, we actually do have back-to-back -back similar championships for both the men and the women. Uh, it kind of speaks to their programs, uh, and a lot of credit goes out to Seth Tunick and, and the women's coach for Francis Parker. They're, they're both having a great year this year. Yeah, that's, it is. It definitely talks about the, the strength of their programs. Just continuity is such a, is a big factor, and so they year in and year out are putting a nice – solid uh, clubs out on the field. You know, Coronado girls just won the, t the title. This is their second, they repeat, they won it last year, now they did it this year. Coronado boys are looking to do the same thing. They're the defending champions and looking to keep that crown and uh, on their own heads. Another throw, throw in, in right in front of the net and snagged out of the air by the goalkeeper. Nafasi, great job going up in traffic to get that. 
and cleared out by Francis Parker, but taken away. And it looks like we got a foul against the Islanders, and Francis Parker will get the ball. Yellow card given to the Coronado man. The yellow card given to Jose Velez of Coronado. Francis Parker get a free kick right at the midfield stripe. Entering the game now for Coronado, number 19, Martin Dykstra. Martin Dykstra coming into the ball game for the Islanders. And we're set to resume action right here with the free kick. Adam Wright controlling the ball, kicking into the middle. Ball's up high, right in front of the net. Coronado would love to get this ball out of there, cleared. But Parker's keeping it in. We've got Francis Parker's crowd trying to match the energy of Coronado. They're starting up a couple chants here, trying to get some inspiration to their team and see if they get a couple shots on goal. And Coronado's right back, chanting right back at him. Yeah, I love it. Love to hear the fans getting involved in the ball games, trying to cheer their teams on, send a little energy out to their respective teams. Absolutely. And Coronado's cheering section was a big back part of the, the, uh, of the women's Coronado. title. Uh, going into half, they seem to be lacking a bit of energy, but coming out of that halftime, Coach Medina, as well as the crowd, just really inspired the women's team to fire up. And it looks like they're trying to keep that methodology going here into the men's championship. Uh, there's a battle on the field and also in the stands. It's going to be interesting. Battle for the ball. Coronado controls, tries to clear. And now Parker controls the ball on the other side of the midfield stripe. Taken away by Coronado. And passed ahead. Great defense by Parker to keep that ball from advancing any further and forcing the Islanders to have to throw it in. Yeah, that's number nine, Kyle Koshland for Coronado. He's just a junior, but uh, as a striker, he's lending some support to his defense. I think they're in a, in a bit of a defensive mode right now and, and trying to maintain a little bit of ball possession to see if they could open something up. Nathan Anderson again on the throw. Man, he just shows such strength on those throw-ins. He gets the ball right in front of the net, but that time it's turned away by Francis Parker. Coronado keeping the ball in their zone there and, and returned back to the other way by Francis Parker. Nice strong leg shown. And kicked out of there by the Coronado keeper. Possession goes to Francis Parker on the change. Free kick. Nice deep kick taken by the keeper again. And he'll clear it. A strong kick across midfield. Coronado keeping it in the zone over here, in the attacking zone. They seem to be a little more aggressive in possessing the ball, but boy, Francis Parker sure coming out strong as well. They just are not giving anything away. Yeah, Francis Parker's got a lot of heart, you can tell, and, and they're really planning towards the future. They've got seven freshmen on this CIF contending squad here. Uh, Coronado has won in the past, and they're looking to do another one here, but Francis Parker looks to be something to be reckoned with going into the future. Nice centering pass there, but defended well by Francis Parker. Coronado again puts it in front of the net. Shot on goal is wide left. Great kick there. He lined that one up perfectly. That was number five for, or 15 for yeah, Coronado. Andrew Orozco showing some strong leg there. He lined Andrew it up Orozco well and just a little wide left on the kick. Francis Parker. 
And Francis Parker's got the goal kick. They'll get the ball back in play, see if they can't get something going here and make up the deficit. They trail at 1-0. Coronado scored early. It's 1-0 Coronado here in the Division IV Boys Soccer Championship game here on San Diego, CIF San Diego.tv. Just over 18 minutes left to go here in the first half. And other than that one score, it's been a defensive battle between these two teams. Nice hustle by Riley Peterson getting a leg on that ball, but Parker gets the ball inbounds quickly. And again, good defense by Coronado to keep that ball out of the box and get it going the other way. Another example of the height advantage right there of Coronado Islanders going up and getting that ball over the Francis Parker player. You can just feel the crowd is ready to get involved a little more. They're just antsy waiting for something to happen. Coronado on the attack, but it's turned away by Francis Parker and out of bounds. It's going to go back to Coronado. A strong kick into the zone. But again, defended well by Francis Parker. Nice footwork there. Andrew Alejandro Wiley. But defended well by Colin Scott. Keeping the man, keeping the offensive man in front of him and forcing him to kick it out of bounds. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise here on CIFSanDiego.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. We got a corner kick coming for Coronado. On the ground, number, number two, Riley Peterson gets the return pass and they kick it in front of the net, but cleared out by Francis Parker. Just when Francis Parker thinks they got a little space out there to go with it. Coronado closes the gap, but Francis Parker bringing it into the attacking zone. and Ball in the deep corner. Kicked out in front and wow. snagged out of the air by the goalkeeper right in front of a Francis Parker player. Great play by the keeper there. Not sure, didn't see the number. I'm not sure who their starting keeper is out there. Number one, but we don't have it on our roster. So the stalemate continues. Yeah, that seemed to be the best chance so far for Francis Parker as Coronado oh. just bounces right over number nine's head. Yeah, Kyle Koshlin was in deep and the ball just was a little too high for him to get to it. He had a good opportunity right in front of the net. Cleared and not. By Coronado. Francis Parker, tenacious. Nice lead pass there. And again, centered, but cleared by Francis Parker. Francis Parker on the attack, but defended well and kicked out of bounds by Matt Overham. Francis Parker will get the ball inbounds deep in Coronado territory. Got a couple of substitutions for Francis Parker, running some fresh legs in. 
And yeah, you mentioned it early, Tommy. This, you know, the heat is going to get to some of these kids, and it's going to see be a matter of seeing who has the deeper squad, who can rotate more guys in and keep their legs fresh. Yeah, as a matter of strategy, the Coronado sidelines has a has a tent over them, uh, protecting them from the heat. And as the day drags on, this field is just getting hotter and hotter. And you know, up here in the booth, we have a bit of a breeze, like Mark Mark mentioned. But down there on the field, it's it's warm. Fatigue is definitely going to be a factor. Nice in throw in onto the, right in front of the net, but defended again very well by Coronado and cleared. Right back. But yeah, Francis Parker kicked it right back in there, trying to keep the ball in close. Nice hustle by both players, no call. Just a little bit of contact and oh. taken out of the air by Justin Aiden, the goalkeeper. And he's looking for somebody to get the ball to and kicks it deep and across midfield. Battle for the ball between two players and Coronado comes away with it. Yeah, it seems like so far, Mark, there's been a lot, hasn't been a whole lot of ball possession in terms of keeping it within a, a, a team for an ma extended matter of time. It seems right. like a lot of back and forth and, you know, kicking it between the two teams and trying to fill each other out. But Yeah, Tommy, no one team has really controlled the ball very long and really shown any kind of, you know, tactical control where they were able to pass the ball around and, and create a good shot. Um, most of this game has been played, you know, most, you know, to the center portion of the field. And uh, again, you know, it's, it's one of those games that, you know, come half after the second half starts, it, you know, all hell might break loose. Yeah, you never know as, as the <laughs> 10 minute mark is getting here close, we're gonna see uh, what kind of adjustments are gonna be made at half. We're not saying there's not gonna be any scoring before then, but uh, it seems like the team who's gonna really kind of go into the, the halftime with a strategy to really maintain uh, somewhat of a po ball possession game uh, and build a strategy behind that is going to come out the winner in this one. It's, it's been a stalemate at some point. 11.30 left in this first half. Coronado up 1-0 in this Division Four Boys Soccer Championship. Goal kick by Coronado into an across midfield. Coronado keeping the ball in their zone, trying to control it. But Francis Parker's defenders are getting back and doing a nice job at turning him away. And the call, kick goes into the goalkeeper, and Nafasi will clear it. Strong high kick out to midfield. Coronado, or rather Francis Parker, controls the ball, gets it up forward. And out of bounds, it's going to go to Francis Parker. See if they can set up some kind of a nice inbound play here and get a ball in front of the net and, you know, maybe do what uh, Coronado did. Get a nice look in there. They got the free kick coming in. See what they can do with it. Kicked at the net and over the net and out of bounds. A little too strong there. And Coronado will get the ball back and go back on the attack. Substitutions for Coronado. Entering the game, number 11, Luke Hoffman, and number 19, Martin Dykstra. So that's, that's Luke Hoffman and Martin Dykstra being subbed in uh, as, as there's about nine minutes left here in the first half. Uh, let's see if they can make an impact in this game. Nice long kick into the cross midfield. Francis Parker defends well, takes control of the ball. But Coronado responds defensively. And Coronado's going to get control of this ball. Oh, and it goes out of bounds. Goal kick to Coronado. And Coronado will get the goal kick. Yeah, this, Tommy, seems like one of those games that suddenly something's going to happen and everything's just going to break loose. Yeah, there's, there's going to be some shakeups at half, that's for sure. Again, we're battling right at midfield. We got a foul out there against Francis Parker. Oh, oh. Coronado's going to get a free kick. 
Coronado Ball. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the San Diego Hall of Champions. The Hall of Champions located in Balboa Park is the nation's largest multi-sport museum with three levels of memorabilia and 68,000 square feet of space. It's also a great place to host your next event as Coronado goes just off the crossbar. Another shot on goal, just missed. You can just feel the energy. They, they sense that they're close. Alejandro Wiley out there battling, controlling the ball. But Colin Scott on the defense is playing well. Colin Scott went down early. He was limping pretty badly early on in the game, but uh, showing no signs of, uh, of any ill effects of that injury he sustained. Well, once again, thank you for sponsoring this event for the San Diego Hall of Champions. For more information, visit the Hall of Champions online at sdhoc.com. Throw in from the side is cleared out by Francis Parker. Nice defense. And Coronado will get the ball on the throw in. And the official is slowing play down. We got an injured player. Looks like Andrew Orozco for Coronado down there taking his time getting up. There was a lot of guys in front of the net going after that throw in, so I imagine some bumping heads is going on. A lot of activity, a lot of contact in this game, and the officials are letting them play. But just two, two solid defensive teams going after the ball, playing hard, nothing malicious. And uh, nice to see them be allowed to play the ball game. And number seven, Nathan Anderson. Just about 6.30 left in this game, or in this half, rather. Coronado up 1-0 on a beautiful sideline play that ended up with a Riley Peterson goal. Coronado controlling the ball, but that's out of bounds, and Francis Parker will get the throw in and possession of the ball. Yeah, Francis Parker hasn't had a whole lot of success getting the ball past the 25-yard the, the line of the Coronado Islanders. They got a three-set uh, defensive backfield where they're really protecting the goalie. To Francis Parker. The Coronado goalie, uh, Justin Aiden, has been involved in just two, two or three plays here. Um, and that's, that's a testament to their defensive backs right there. I mean, a lot of those, those sweepers are doing a great job in keeping Francis Parker from getting close to the net. Yeah, great point, Tommy. Their defenders back there are doing an outstanding job of any balls that are kicked in there, they're just kicking them right back out. And I know part of it is because of their height advantage or getting up in the air and knocking the balls away with headers, or they're just beating Francis Parker to the ball. So yeah, defense, the defensemen back there are doing an outstanding job of protecting and helping their goalkeeper out. Coronado's gonna get another goal kick here. More Substitution substitutions Coronado. by Coronado, rotating Play fresh legs in pretty game. frequently. So certainly that's gonna Randy help. Peterson. Number 15, Keep them Andrew fresh. Roscoe, and number 17, Jack Gould. Three defenders around the ball, the Francis Parker uh, ball controller there, and just nowhere for him to go, nowhere to pass to, and uh, just making it tough on him to get the ball anywhere close to uh, striking distance. Nice footwork there. And centered, and wow. oh, nice attempt there. That was a great pass. Adam Wright yeah. into and Shane Mavi. Mavi was streaking Corey through the, the defense, and that seems like might be the, the formula for success. Uh, Adam Wright has a great eye for, for cutting Corey. players, and Mavi got behind the defenders in a perfectly placed kick. It was just a little bit too quick for him to get there. Yeah, just an outstanding pass by Wright. Mavi just about got there, but there was a, there's quite a bit of heat on that pass and just was a little bit too far out in front for Mavi to make anything with, do anything with it. Francis Parker still with control of the ball and whistle on the play. Foul against Coronado. Free kick for the Lancers. And 
That's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be a goal kick for Coronado. 3.30 left goal now in the first half. We're still at one nothing in favor of the Coronado Islanders in this Division IV Boys Soccer Championship game. Beautiful day here at Sarah High School in Tierra Santa, just a little north and east of San Diego downtown. Just continue to see play right around midfield between the 40s and the 30s and not a whole lot of activity going on close to the nets. Nice job of defending and clearing that ball out by Francis Parker. And we got a foul called foul against goal. the Parker Islanders. Goal. Free kick for Francis Parker. Right up the center of the field. Headed in to really nobody, and Coronado clears it out. And again, Tommy, there's those three defenders back there just waiting for anything that comes their way. Collision there going after the ball. No call made, and rightfully so. We got the sun now coming into the booth. Yes. It's warm up here. I could only I imagine what it is down there. <laughs> it's got to be 85. I know we keep talking about it, but unless you're in San Diego. Did you bring your uh, sunscreen there, Tommy? We got to warm it up. And our fair-haired producer, our fair-skinned producer over here, better get our sunscreen on. Two minutes, and Francis Parker trying to get in and go on the attack, but Coronado has just been a, done a fantastic job of getting back and defending in close yeah. and keeping the ball. I mean, there have been really no serious shots on goal that uh, have, have come close. Yeah, we're going to see at half, Mark, what kind of uh, adjustments Seth Tunick makes with the with that Parker offense. Uh, those Lancers are, are making a couple runs, and... Adam Wright's been able to provide some, some passes, but they just haven't been quite on time yet. Uh, all it takes is one, though, and as the Islanders are up 1-0, it uh, looks like it might go like that into half unless the Francis Parker Lancers make a move right here, which they might. And there again is a defender for Coronado, clearing the ball. Just when it looks like Parker's going to make something happen. Got a little there bit of go. space there. Great defense. Defender beats him to the ball, Drew Maracle. Maracle uh, does a great job of getting back to the ball and beating a Francis Parker player to the ball. And Coronado has possession of the ball and will get the free kick. And cleared, and now we've got a Francis or a Coronado player break on a break. Good defense by Parker. And again, that opportunity is turned away by good defense. So yeah, Tommy, I mean, defensively, Francis Parker is doing a great job of staying with Coronado and Coronado doing the same defensively. That's what we talked about early on. This is going to be a defensive battle. Right. Two teams that just don't give up a lot of goals. And so it is a defensive battle, although right now the Islanders hold the advantage with a one nothing lead. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. At ha you know, what are the coaches going to say at halftime? Francis Parker maybe pull out and be a little more patient, pass the ball on the perimeter a little bit, and try to look for some openings. Coronado centers the ball. Shot on goal goes over. Goes through the field goal upright. So is that a three-pointer? No, I don't think that's worth anything, Mark. Wrong sport. <laughs> I've watched a lot of football this fall, so. <laughs> yeah, it's no good. Score remains 1-0 in favor of Coronado. Coronado's noticeably been able to maintain the ball when they do get it on the Francis Parker side of the. And there's the halftime. We're going into half now, 1-0. Francis Parker down to the Coronado Islanders here yes. in the. 
CIF championship. Yeah, we're seeing a defensive battle here. Coronado leads at one nothing here in the CIF San Diego Division Four championship on CIFSanDiego.tv. We'll be right back. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run this to the five, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow, he was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just, <laughs> holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the and sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be out. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5, 10, touch. Welcome back, everybody. It is halftime here at the CIF. San Diego Division IV Boys Soccer Championship. Coronado Islanders lead Francis Parker Lancers one to nothing on a, uh, a Riley Peterson goal early in the ball game. Since that time, it's been a defensive battle. And Tommy, what is what do we need to see here in the second? How is Francis Parker going to um, kind of gain a little control? Yeah, they're looking like uh, a lot of times, Mark, when they get the ball down into the Coronado side of the field. They're really kind of uh, passing the ball around, but not making these deliberate passes that are going to set them up for, for a goal. Uh, some of the passes are, are being cut off, and the defenders are making a great play on the ball. Uh, Coronado, on the other hand, is taking the ball down and passing the ball around the perimeter and really setting themselves up for a good shot. Uh, some, of the, some of the passes that Wright has been making into Shane Mavi, for, for example, uh, were, were great chances, and those need to be kind of developed and, and worked on in order for Francis Parker to get back in this ballgame because at this point, uh, this stalemate's been coming from a lot of turnovers on the Francis Parker end. Yeah, you, you make a good point. Adam Wright made a fantastic pass to, to uh, cutter Mavi right in front of the net, but it was just a little too strong. And, you know, like you said, perhaps if they can spread it out a little bit and be a little more patient on the perimeter passing the ball around, they can create some more openings like that and get a nice assist and, and a goal and get back into this ballgame. You know, it's only a one-goal right. game right now, so they're by a long shot not out of this 
But uh, their defensive energy has been good. Um, they've responded well uh, when Coronado has been in the attack mode uh, and turning them away. So uh, I think we got an exciting second half coming up, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to some some adjustments. Uh, obviously, Coach Brian Hyatt Aliu has been doing a great job at keeping his team focused on on playing some solid defense, uh, you know, and really defending against. The, the Francis Parker offense, They're, the goaltender hasn't had much of uh, play on the ball, which has been great for them. So Seth Tuck Tunick will go into half, and I'm sure he'll make some great adjustments. Yeah, Justin Aiden, a goalkeeper for Coronado, has certainly got to be thankful for his great defense in front of him, and he has not had to work very hard yet. But I'm sure Francis Parker is going to come out and try to change all of that. So that'll do it for our halftime show, folks. We look forward to a great second half between these two teams, Coronado High School and Francis Parker. And uh, we are in beautiful Sarah High School in San Diego, California, and we'll be back with a second half on CIFSanDiego.tv. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run us to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown. Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sac Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson, her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side. Cut shot, kept alive. Back in one by Cathedral. And this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide. And the Cathedral Dons have won the title. 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter steps under center in their tight wing formation. Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown Imperial on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40-yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20-yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 
64-yard touchdown run, his fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing. And the <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal five line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it. 50-42. They lulled you to sleep. And then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game, 21 to 20. Welcome back, everybody. We're about to start the second half of the boys' Division IV CIF Soccer Championships. Coronado leads it one to nothing over Francis Parker. Uh, we had a defensive battle there to begin the game. Francis Parker kicks off this half. And we're underway, and Coronado continues to play great defense and keep the ball out of there into the field. The only goal of the game so far, a Riley Peterson header off a throw-in that was deflected once before he got his head on it, and uh, that put Coronado up 1-0 early, and it's just been that score the whole way, and since that time it has just been a defensive battle. And so, Tommy, you were talking about maybe Francis Parker trying to set up and be a little more patient and pass around the perimeter. Let's see if they can pull that off. Yeah, let's check out what kind of adjustments Coach Seth Tunick made in the half. Uh, he's been known for his, for his uh, analysis of the first half and kind of taking that into the second half as Coronado drives down the field and a near shot on goal there. Coronado in their all-white uniforms. Francis Parker with the white shorts and the gold shirts. And again, the ball just being played back and forth inside the 30-yard lines. Or should I say between the 30-yard lines? continue to wait for one team to just really take control of this game, but it's a testament to both teams' defenses that neither team has been able to take charge. And I think a lot to do with, with the, those midfielders, uh, like Coronado's Riley Peterson, number two. He's actually the one who scored the goal in the first half, and he's also leaking back on defense and just kind of playing the whole field, providing support on both ends of the field for Coronado. That's just good, solid team play by Peterson there helping out wherever he has to to help his team be better and be more successful. And there's Peterson with the ball right now. Got a little bit of space on the attack. Turns Gets the corner. The defender and wow. turned away by the goalkeeper. That was Justin, I'm take that back, that was uh, uh, Sean Nafasi, the goalkeeper, knocking that Riley one away. Goal. Riley Peterson with a really aggressive attack Saved on the goal. A little shaken up. Looks like we're going to have a corner kick here. Corner kick for the Islanders. See if they can make something happen here. Yep, temperatures are rising out here. Definitely getting hotter up here, so you know down on the field it's going to be quite a bit hotter for the players on that artificial turf. I'm sure they're loving it, though, Mark. I saw a game the other day that was uh, negative temperatures over there in in Europe, they're playing a negative 15. I'm sure Ooh. this isn't too bad. No, it doesn't suck to live in San Diego, does it? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Goal kick to Francis Parker. Corner kick is uh, long. It goes out of bounds, and Francis Parker will get a goal kick to start this possession. Kicked right back by Coronado, but Francis Parker will get a throw in from the side. Yeah, a lot of times cramps start coming into play too as well. Um, at halftime, I saw that a lot, both teams were actually hydrating quite well. Um, that's a smart play by both coaching staffs, and it's, it's important to stay flexible and loose in the second half too and ma maintain some energy levels as they come out. And it looks like both teams are 
really starting to push the ball. Francis Parker's making a move here, but those defenders are. Here goes Francis Taking Parker. Francis Parker. Oh! oh man, how did that ball got back to him? He was right in front of the net and just missed wide left on the shot on goal. Wow, that was Francis Parker, captain. That looked like Patrick Barba there. Making a play on the ball, and as he runs back to his team, he says, hey, we got this. Let's maintain calm. We're only down one score. Let's just get another one of those going. Yeah, Justin Aiden, the goalkeeper there for the Islanders, was kind of lost in no man's land. He wasn't sure which way to go, whether to go get the ball or get back. And fortunately for the Islanders, that ball went wide left. Here's Peterson again. Coronado showing great patience. Nice ball inside there. Taken by Kyle Koshlin and now taken away by Francis Parker. Kick inside, up high, taken by the goalkeeper. Nassifi goes up high to get that right in front of the Coronado player. Alejandro oh, like Wiley was trying to get up there and head that into the net, but uh, Nassifi beat him to the ball. Out of bounds, ball goes to Francis Parker right at midfield. Coronado defenders are just doing a great job of getting in front of passes. You know, the throw-ins, they're beating Francis Parker players to the ball and getting a head or a foot on it before any of the Parker players. Oh, funny bounce right there. Goes over Francis Parker player to Coronado. Coronado's able to advance the ball upfield. Kyle Koshlin had it for a moment but had it taken away. Francis Parker with the ball. Nicholas Watkins advancing, or take that back, that was Adam Wright with the ball, kicking it upfield. And again, they just continue to volleyball it back and forth between the 30s. That's Jose Velez with the shot in there, headed by number eight, Alejandro Wiley. Uh, those kind of those kind of passes there are dangerous for that Francis Parker defense. Those kind of entry passes are going to do a lot of a lot of damage if they don't protect against them. And again, we talk about the height advantage. They get a nice entry pass like that up high, and uh, Coronado can get up high and head it in there. They, they can get up higher than the Francis Parker players, and they have that to their advantage. Nice battle for the ball there, and we got a foul against Francis Parker. Coronado will. Get the ball inside of midfield. Free kick to Coronado. Jose Velez setting up for the free kick. Lefty. Right down in front of the net until the cluster of players and headed out of there by Adam Wright. Nice job on the defense. Coronado will maintain possession down deep in uh, Francis Parker territory. Got Max McKee warming up on the sidelines. Hoping to get into the game here. Or maybe just staying loose. I like that. Never know when you're going to need to be in the game. Got to be ready. You never know when your number's called. Essentially a corner kick there off the play by Coronado, but it's cleared by Francis Parker. Nice job on the defense. Oh, aggressive Lots play there by Drew Miracle. A little push in the back against number 13 for Francis Parker, Shane Mavi. They call a penalty on it. Yeah, a little late call on the penalty. Oh. I wasn't sure they were going to get a whistle, but sure enough, we got it, and uh, they'll get a free kick by Francis Parker. Parker ball. Just a little over seven minutes into this second half of the CIF Boys Division Four Soccer Championship game. Coronado leads it one to nothing. I'm Mark Grumman alongside my broadcast partner, Tomas Rutasan. And uh, we're having some fun, enjoying soaking up some sunshine, watching some soccer. Two teams out there battling hard for that championship crown. Yeah, there's no, no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon than, than out on a day like this and enjoying some high school soccer Division Four. The Coronado Islanders and the Lancers are battling it out today. Uh, we're going to have some scoring coming, I feel it. Here we go. Oh, corner Close kick one. is nice. Headed toward the goal, but taken in by Dustin Aiden. Justin Aiden. And he'll clear it out with a nice kick 
across midfield and headed forward by Coronado. And Nassifi will pick it up and put it back into play. Kick it out of bounds. Coronado ball right around midfield. Out of bounds by Francis Parker. Coronado will again get the throw in from the side. And just not much happening yet here, Tommy. This two teams feeling each other out still. That whole, whole first half of it, second half, has been much of the same, although we saw a couple of attempted shots on goal, so it's a little more activity than what we witnessed in the first half. Well, the pressure is really on Francis Parker. Coronado, if they had to decide, they'd have it going like this the entire game. So uh, the pressure at this point is going to be uh, remain on Francis Parker, and Coronado will keep playing this style of soccer all day if they need to. No, oh, absolutely. They just they're they're totally happy with this. They got the lead, and if they can just keep it going like this, then they will be going home champions yet again. Repeat champions after they did it last year. They want to do it again. What are they drinking over there in Coronado? They got some great soccer programs coming out. <laughs> What's in the water? What's in the water there? Goal kick by Francis Parker. Adam Wright kicks it out to midfield. And two teams battling for the ball. Nobody with clear possession just yet. Coronado making an attempt, and he's got it. Kicks it ahead, but cleared by Francis Parker. And this pace definitely works to the advantage of Coronado. There's Colin Scott battling. Andrew Orozco out there has got a big height advantage. I'd like to see him get down a little bit more closer to the goal. Francis Parker on the attack, but turned away by Coronado, but it looks like we're going to have a foul. We've got a yellow card. Francis Parker's getting called for a yellow card here. Oh, nope. Looks like it's Coronado. It's Coronado, Francis Parker. He's going to have a free Yellow kick there. Given to the man. Not sure what player they got for it, but there was a little bit of a scrap going free on out there. Francis so Francis Parker with the free kick. Certainly love to see them get a little more involved in this and they get the ball in deep. Low liner there Low by number 21 ball. for... Francis Parker, Captain Ryan Kretz, senior, looking for, a, looking for a championship here to wrap up his high school soccer career. Wouldn't be surprised if he's going to play somewhere. Yeah, I would imagine they have a, a lot of players on this team that are being watched by the major colleges and uh, going to be moving on and getting some education and opportunity to play soccer at the next level. Yeah, what's better than that? Nice pass onto the side. There's but Peterson. Unable to control it. Francis Parker kicks it out of bounds, and Coronado will take it at about the 36 or 35-yard line on the throw-in. Peterson with the throw-in here. Into the corner. Whistle blown. A little too anxious there. The official saying, hold on a second. We got players changing in and out. Looks like a little hydration is going on on the Coronado sideline. Some Gatorades being drank. It's a smart play there. Just a little after 2.30 in the afternoon here in San Diego on a beautiful Saturday, and it's getting warm. And, uh, you know, here we are on March 3rd, wearing shorts and short sleeves and enjoying some beautiful weather. Yeah, Mark, by my count, we got a 73-degree day in San Diego. Man, now you know why we pay the big bucks to live here. Coronado will have the inbound, the throw in. Looking to get the ball in close. And again, Nathan Anderson, who's been effective with his throw ins in front of the net, does it one more time. But Francis Parker gets up there and heads it out, clears it. Does a nice job of defending that attack. And now they've got control of the ball. Shane Mavi's making a run. 
slips up. Ooh. And a foul call. Mavi trying to turn the corner, couldn't do it, but uh, apparently the defense was a little too aggressive. And the Lancers are going to get a free kick. Foul yeah, these foul calls are coming in a little late, Mark. Yeah, it's interesting, Tommy, you say that because we didn't really see a whole lot of it in the first half. There right. was a lot of contact, and they were just letting them play, and now we're yeah. seeing a lot more. So uh, see, uh, interesting to see how that plays out and how it has an effect on this ball game. Yeah, about 26 minutes left now here in the second half. 1-0 oh, nice lead. Kick. Nice move. Oh, defense by Coronado is huge. Wow. Great play there. That, that defense is staunch. They're hard-nosed guys down there. I believe that was Patrick Barba on the attack from the sideline and just coming in, but Coronado defenders got in there and made a great, great play. Actually, I think that was actually Ryan Kretz. Correct me there. But the Coronado Islanders just uh, got in, you know, recovered and got defensive and turned them away. So side throw in from the sideline for, for the Lancers. Good Gets throw. It out in front of the net. Wow. Ooh. Bobbled by the Coley there. He almost almost knocked that one in. Yeah, Aiden had a little tough job handling that ball, but was able to get control of it and clear it out. And a nice kick to get it way downfield. Little chance for Islanders Coronado. here. Peterson with the ball. Good nice move. Nice little move to get free, and a shot on the goal goes wide right. But a beautiful move by Peterson to free himself up and get a free shot at the, at the goal. Shot at goal wide right. Goal kick to Francis Parker. Mark Grumman alongside Tomas Yurtersan, and we are enjoying soccer here, the CIF Division IV Boys Soccer Championships here in beautiful San Diego, California. one nothing Coronado with about 25 minutes left in the second half. That's shot a great, on goal. Wow. Great shot there by Peterson. That was just an amazing play right there. Good Good run by Coronado. Yeah, nice run. Peterson recognized he was open and took the shot immediately. Good hard shot, but Nassif, he did a great job of knocking that one down and getting it cleared. And Coronado's coming right back on the attack. That water break must have inspired them. They look refreshed. Centering pass is defended by Parker. Not sure why you would touch that if you were Parker there. Yeah, exactly. A little collision out there. And See Looks to be a corner kick. It looks like Joseph Hack down there, kind of slow moving, got up a little slowly in the midst of that collision. Corner kick to and Coronado. Corner kick coming for the Islanders. Haven't seen a lot of corner kicks from them that I recall. Most of them have been the throw-ins from the side, so let's see what right. they can set up here. A little strong, but back and in the middle. headed. Oh, a lot of activity going in there. there. Wow. Looked like Adam play. Wright giving his, giving the, his uh, goalkeeper a little help there because that ball was bouncing around right in front of the net. Wright cleared it out, and Francis Parker dodged a bullet. Hey, guys, catch the best of San Diego section soccer on CIFSanDiego.tv. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes, plus check out game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more. Or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for soccer in San Diego. CIFSanDiego.tv. Coronado with the ball deep in Francis Parker territory. Looking to attack, but Francis Parker with her tenacious defense trying to turn him away. Orozco with the ball up top. She's showing some good patience, the Islanders. Just looking for that opening. And Riley can't control that when it goes out of bounds, and Parker will get possession of the ball. Riley Peterson had a little bit of space out there on the left side, but feet got a little tangled up when the pass was coming and couldn't quite contain it. Throw in for Parker. Defended well by Coronado. Oh, oh. nice back kick there by Peterson. <laughs> Riley wow. Peterson showing some skill. Nice footwork. Fancy footwork there by Peterson. Cleared by Francis Parker, but Coronado's going to get the ball on the side yet again on this half of the field. They've been on the attack mode here pretty consistently in the second half. 22 minutes, just about 22-10 left in this ball game. And uh, Coronado hanging on to a 1-0 lead and still on the attack. Francis Parker needing to get a 
get the ball back and go down and score if they want to continue this game. Good looking kick. Nice header. Great, great kick from the side there by Peterson to get that the ball in the front and the header just about went in but went just wide left. That's a Roscoe down there. He's, he's the tallest guy on the field it looks. And that's, that's a smart play by Coronado getting him down close to the goal for that header. We'll see if, we'll see if uh, Francis Parker can get something going here in the last 20 minutes of the game. They're going to need to. At this point, they haven't really had much shots on goals. Let's see if they can get something going, if, if Coach Bryan can get something going there for Francis Parker. Ball put in play by Adam Wright, down right to the midfield. Parker trying to control it and get the ball up and get it into the attacking zone, see if they can create something. Those defenders seem to be everywhere. They are just waiting patiently. They're staying in position, and the, when the ball comes up, they attack it. They're beating the Parker players to the ball. Big collision out there on the field. No call. And some of the ones we did see called, you kind of wonder why that one was not. But it's up to the official. Coronado can just controlling the pace, controlling the ball, moving it around making the Francis Parker defenders just play chase and wearing them out. And that's just going to take its toll as this game continues to wear on. It's pretty incredible to think that they scored within the first four minutes. We noticed that same pattern was there in the, the women's game where both in the first couple minutes of the first half and then also the second half there were some scores. And then the rest of the half, it seemed like they kind of just settled in and entrenched their defenses. Yeah, that does seem to have been the pattern. And certainly here here for the Coronado. The ball centered and then kicked out Ooh. of bounds over the net. Like Riley Peterson in on the action on, on that one as well. He's been a busy young man here in the second half. Volley at goal off target. Goal kick for Parker. And a substitution oh. for Coronado. Coming into the game, number eight, Alejandro Wiley. Looks like Alejandro Wiley's now entering the game. See if they can shake something up. Looks to be Coronado ball here. Coronado defenders just continue to attack the ball. Anytime a Francis Parker player has any bit of possession of the ball, there's at least two defenders all over him and just not giving him any room to do much with it. Ball in front taken by Nassifi. He will clear it. And a big high kick out across midfield to about the 40-yard line. Coronado with the ball. And nobody really maintaining consistent possession too often. Eighteen thirty left in the ball game, and again the Islanders holding a one nothing lead over Francis Parker in this Division Four Boys Soccer Championship matchup. Coronado on the attack, nice little passing across the field going up the middle. Here comes Coronado in front of the. Front of the net, but kicked away by a defender. Francis Parker's defense responds and is able to turn away the attack. Center kick, front of the net. Whoa. Oh, a little collision there with the goalie. Players up high. Nassifi goes up, takes down a Coronado player. Kick from the side is turned away by Adam Wright. That's Jose Velez battling in there. Little slide tackle. Let's see which, which direction it's going. Looks like it's going to go Francis Parker's way. Nice activity going on in there. Nassifi's down on a knee. That was a heck of a collision he had in there. And I think it was he and uh, Jose Velez going up for that ball. And uh, Velez went down, Nassifi went down. But they're both back on their feet ready to play some more. Francis Parker with the ball. Throwing it in at around the 10 yard line. Trying to make something happen and get back in this game. They've just had no opportunities, few opportunities, I should say. There have been a couple, but uh, 
their opportunities have been met by just great defense from Coronado. Again, Coronado takes control of the inbounds and just kicks it out and is going to set up and be patient and move the ball around. Time is their friend right now with this lead. And they can afford to be patient. Looks like they are. A little handball looked like that. No call. Now, if he picks the ball up, let's see if they can shake something up here. They got to rattle something loose and, and pull out a goal here close. It's getting towards the end of the game, and they have not had the ball on the Coronado side, it seems like, in a, in a, in a good 10, 15 minutes, the, the ball's been dominantly on the Francis Parker side. Yeah, Coronado has certainly controlled the pace and the ball in this ball game, certainly the second half. And Parker's, Francis Parker's attempts to get anything going have just been turned away by solid defense. And we knew both teams playing good defense, and it has been, since that goal, a defensive battle. So the majority of this game has just been a slugfest on defense. There's Velez. A little footwork on the near sideline. Oh, nice move Goes, to get free. Centers it to Peterson. Oh, Back to pass, Velez. Return pass. Velez in front of the net. Oh. Just can't get it to go. Great little two-man game there on the left side. Looked good. Velez just... Pushed it a little, a little too much. He had a great opportunity there to put it in, to go up 2-0. But hey, more importantly, these guys got to lock down this defense and make sure that they keep this game as it is. Coronado's looking to, to win their second CIF championship in a row. Great little two-man game there between Velez and Ryan Keeney. Velez gives pass to Keeney and gets the return pass and just about had a, had a goal there. Great shot on goal, but just went right, right. So here we go again. Parker on the attack, but can controlled and taken away by Coronado. What do you think, Mark? If you're coach for Francis Parker, what do you got to tell these guys right now to get something shaken up? Man, you just got to encourage them to, just to hang tough and to keep attacking. You know, you, if you, you can't afford to let up, certainly now there's only a little over 14 and a half minutes left in the game. You got to keep pressing the issue and Hopefully, as you do that, your opportunities, something will materialize. There will be an opening somewhere. You know, like we saw Adam right on that pass to Mavi on the cut. You know, those might happen, and that's all it takes is one time, and you got a tie ball game. So they just got to keep going after it, keep playing the defense they are, and offensively, if they can maybe spread it out a little bit um, and, and force the Coronado defenders to, to have to run a little more. But yeah. I tell you, man, I'm impressed with the uh, conditioning of Coronado and how hard they get after the ball. There's always a couple guys around, a couple defenders around the ball, and they're not giving Parker any room to do much of anything. Yeah, that, that, that midfield for Coronado is looking strong. They're, they're well conditioned. And I think here approaching the 10-minute mark, we might see Francis Marker start making some moves as they're subbing somebody out now uh, to then – put some more offense in this game. It looks like the midfielders are pressing up a little bit higher and uh, almost similar to a pulling the goalie tactic in NHL. You might see a little bit of a, more of an offensive push by Francis Parker. Yeah, it might not be a bad idea as we get later and later into this game. It's time's running out on him, and Coronado continues to control the ball on the clock. And they clear it once more. Nice job of just pulling it out and being patient and letting the play set up. Yeah, both teams showing tremendous conditioning. They're just running hard out there, going after every ball. Nobody, I don't see anybody dogging it at all, man. These kids are playing hard Ryan, all Ryan, the way up and down the field. Yeah, Ryan Keeney there, uh, the captain's getting pumped up, uh, out of bounds on Francis Parker, and he knows with this kind of pressure, he's going to be taking home hopefully another championship for his team. He's just a, he's a senior here, uh, and he's been playing a heck of a game uh, once again, Ryan, Ryan Keeney getting fired up. I like to see that. Yep, you got to love your senior leaders to step up and really encourage your kids, pump them up, and lead the way just by example. And he is definitely doing a great job of that. Throw in in front of the net is headed out of there by Francis Parker, cleared. And we got a battle for the ball around midfield. And once again, Coronado in control, keeping it inside the midfield well, line. To Peterson, here we go. Nice ball movement there. Kicked it right up in the middle. Great center. And great job of Nassifi getting up there and poking that ball out of, out of harm's way. 
Now Parker on the move coming up there. Oh, a little good move. speed move. Out of bounds, Orozco. Yeah, it's those midfielders. I'll tell you, Mark, these guys are everywhere. From Peterson to, to constantly attacking to Orozco, coming in through some corner kicks, and even coming back to defend when there is a streak, uh, a streaking offensive guy for yeah, Francis Parker. Doing. They're doing a heck of a job of being all over the field. They are well conditioned. You got you to gotta give credit to the coaching. Yep, and well coached. They know how to go get there. They get the right angles so they can cut off anybody who's uh, trying to make an attack on the goal. So, yeah, conditioning and, and proper angles are definitely a product of solid coaching. As Luke, Luke Hoffman steps into the game, looks like Coronado is, is going more towards a, a defensive approach as he's more of a, a midfielder. They're going to get him and get some playing time senior, Luke Hoffman. Ball in front of the net. Nice stop. <laughs> Justin Aiden makes a great play on the shot on goal. That throw in from the wow. side landed right in front of the net, bounced around, and uh, one of the Francis Parker players took a great shot, but Aiden turns it away. Adam Wright be. battling there for the ball, taken by Riley, and down he goes. Riley Peterson and Adam Wright battling out there. That might be the play of the game. Could be, you know, you got your goal, but uh, that saved uh, the lead right there. Nice yeah. play by Aiden. Hard to maintain concentration when you've got all these guys scrambling in front of you and you're trying to maintain focus on where the ball is and mm -hmm. suddenly it's flying at you. And he did a really nice job of getting in front of it and controlling it. Two more substitutions coming in for Coronado, more fresh legs. Get the other kids out, get hydrated, stretch out a little bit. Yeah, Nathan Anderson now steps onto the field. Lucky number seven. Nathan's a, he's a junior getting some playing time. He's been around for a couple years now. I'm sure that he's hungry for another title, having won one last year. Uh, those, kind of, those kind of emotions don't fade. You know, winning one is great, but two's even better. It never gets old. Never does. Winning never gets old. And, you know, you only got about four seniors on this Coronado team, so they pull it off. Great you got a there. bunch of kids with championships and an opportunity to win another one next year, and they're all coming back. It's, it's a bright future for the Coronado Islanders. Great footwork there for number, number 23. That's, that's Josh Leibowitz, the forward, the senior there for – Francis Parker trying to make something happen. Coronado on the throw in, kicked again out of bounds by Francis Parker. Just under 10 minutes now. Mark Grumman alongside my broadcast partner, Tomas Tommy Urtasan, and we are enjoying a solid defensive 10. soccer game Eight here in the boys' five. division four championship where Coronado holds a one-nothing lead over Francis Parker. And Seem to be in control of this game, but Francis Parker is not quitting. They are battling hard and looking to make something happen and try to tie this game up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a couple more strikes by Francis Parker. They, I know they have it in them. They just got to put something together. They haven't had the luck needed at this point, but who knows? They still might have something left. Battle for the ball there. Nice collision on the side. No uh, we do got a call. Out of bounds, I guess it all it is. Or do we got a foul? Foul against foul Francis Parker. Given to Francis Parker. Or Coronado, rather. Is Francis Parker going to get a free kick? 8-15 and counting left in this ball game. Francis Parker looking to attack. Free kick into the middle. Headed there it around is. in there. Ooh. And, oh, wow. man. Opportunity goes far, far out of bounds, deep behind the net. And the student section yelling air ball. They're, they're thinking the wrong sport too, Mark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Showing some leg strength there, but just a little too much. Goal kick for Coronado comes in. Parker takes it at about midfield. Francis Parker's looking to make a move here. I can feel it. They're, they're really pressing forward now with uh, 720 left in the game. They've got to make a move here, and I feel like they're, they're, they're going to. They're, yeah, they're still making the effort. They're trying to get something going. Coronado's just got to be careful 
to not start playing to not lose. They got to just keep playing hard. Right. Don't play to protect. Ooh. Wow. Off Parker and out of bounds, it'll be Coronado ball. But yeah, Coronado just needs to maintain what they're doing and not change up, not try to play protective. Just keep attacking and just do what they've been doing for the entire game. They've still only got a little under seven minutes to go. And this title will be theirs if they can keep it up. Here's number seven for Francis Parker coming back and taking it out of the grass with Peterson, who definitely would have done something with it. That's number seven. That's Parker Stow. Or Parker Stowe there for Francis Parker. That's a his namesake. Battle for the ball out there. Taken away by Coronado. Just maintaining possession and control. Oh, nice forward here pass. Here comes Riley Peterson on the attack. There it and is. And he slides one by the goal. There it is. Score for Coronado. Riley Peterson, his second of the game. And it's two to nothing. Coronado Islanders with six minutes left in the ball game. And now Francis Parker certainly has their work cut out for him. It's been a tough, tough ball game all along, and now they've got to make up two goals, and they've just had very few opportunities to begin with. So they really got to turn up the heat and, and make something happen right away. 5.30 left in the ballgame. Coronado up 2 to nothing in this Division IV Boys Soccer Championship on CIFSanDiego.tv. Coronado's starting to sense it. They're getting close. They just got to keep playing their solid defense and doing what they've been doing all game long. They look hungry here. They look like they want another. Yeah, nothing as motivating as scoring, huh? That oh, gets yeah. you wanting more. Francis Parker will get the ball out of bounds. Parker. With five minutes to go. And hang around, guys. Stay tuned for the CIF, dot, or CIF San Diego TV postgame show where we will select the player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ballgame. That's coming up after the game on CIF San Diego TV. And then shortly after the end of this ballgame, we've got the Division II girls final. Great play. Nice move on the breakaway. Pulls it out. Good defense recovery. Take away any kind of a lane to Velez. show. Velez showing some fancy footwork. And we've got a goal kick for Francis Parker. Yes, after this game, their next game on championship Saturday here at Sarah High School, La Costa Canyon and Westview for will battle for the girls' Division II soccer championship. So we're not even halfway done with all this ball soccer we're seeing today. Another big game coming up, and an uh, we look forward to you guys staying along with us on that one. Coronado continues to really control just the action out there. Francis Parker's working hard, but they're just having little luck getting anything going. And Coronado just continues to control the pace, control the ball. Can't get the corner there on the, the attack, but takes it in. Two defenders now and just dancing around out there and kicked out of bounds by Francis Parker. That's Alejandro Wiley over there on the sidelines looking to get on the PPR tonight. Yeah, Wiley's showing some fancy footwork, dancing around the ball, but uh, nothing much to show for it really. But it sure looks good. Yeah, it looks good, <laughs> and, the, and the crowd liked it. <laughs> exactly. Nathan Anderson now with a good throw in. Close to the goal there. Yeah, Nathan Anderson has been really effective with his throw ins from the side right in front of the net and given his uh, team an opportunity to make something happen. Just inside of three minutes left in this second half, left in the ball game, Coronado with a 2 nothing lead. And their energy levels just seems to have ratcheted up a notch because they can sense that yeah. the time is running out on their opponent and that they are about to claim a crown. But Francis Parker not giving up. They they don't want to go away easily. They're just working hard trying to make something happen. Uh, it's a tall task if they're going to try to get back in this game. they got two goals to score here in less than two and a half minutes. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you never know. I've seen stranger things happen. They definitely can pull something out here. They just got to get... One goal, just get one, and then you're right back in it, and you never know. 
Nice job by Nassifi going out and getting that ball, beating the Coronado player to it. He'll clear it out with a good kick. Up high. Battle for the control of the ball. Francis Parker keeps it in the zone over there. And they're, you know, they're inside. But again, Coronado defense comes in, but he's going to be called for a oh, foul. Oh. And it'll be a free kick for Francis Parker. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the two-minute mark. Two minutes now. I remind this you, is it. Francis Parker has to no make a move right here. Right at the two-minute mark, Francis Parker with a free kick at the 25-yard no line. So, like you said, anything can happen. If they can sneak one in here and then turn up the defensive heat and maybe get another one, you know, who knows? Free kick to Francis Parker. Adam Wright kicks it in, but it's taken, turned away by Coronado. Ooh. Check that that was not Adam Wright. That was Ryan Kretz on the free kick, the senior captain. Coach on the sideline didn't like that call there. Looked like Francis Parker got a little rough with one of his players. and we had a whistle on the field. Looks like the ref's going to come over and say some a few words with the coach here. Brian Hyatt-Alou getting uh, an explanation from his official. Probably would uh, serve him well just to let this game play out yeah. and not get the official upset at you. Right. You got a 2 nothing lead. I know you want to protect your players, but maybe better serve just to keep quiet and let it run out. Yeah, at this point, a, a championship crown would fix him right up if anybody gets a little hurt. Cleared by Coronado. Francis Parker, a little high kick into the middle there. Again, cleared out by Coronado. There's tall players just going up high, getting their head on the ball and able to clear. And that's nice, effective clear there. Nassifi takes the ball, kicks it out to midfield. And Coronado just looking to run the clock down, control the ball, play a little bit of a stall game here. Coronado's fans are excited about their impending sweep of Francis Parker here in the boys and girls championship games. Adam right down there for Francis Parker. Clearing the ball out, but out of bounds, and Coronado's going to get a throw in from the side. And we got to be getting close to the end of this. And I think the players sense it. Nice defense by Francis Parker down in the corner off of Coronado, and it'll be the Lancer's ball to throw in. Now it's just all academic. Coronado just running the clock down. And there it is. And there it is. Congratulations to the Coronado Islanders boys. Again, the CIF Division IV soccer champions here in San Diego section on a 2 nothing victory over the Francis Parker Lancers. A hard-fought battle, great defensive game. Uh, congratulations to both squads on a fantastic showing. And now the Islanders, boys and girls, will be taking home matching his and her championship trophies yet again. The 2012 CIF Division IV champion soccer team, the boys of Coronado Islands. Yeah, it looks like Coronado's going to be Having a good time tonight. I might have to head over there and, and see what the Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs and Jordan Lertik will take that knee. Back in a little bit with our uh, post game show and we will pick our player of the game and try to get an interview if we can on uh, and uh, we will bring that shortly here on CIF San Diego dot TV fourth and ten from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine Kennedy dropping back to pass 
looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs, and Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner, oh. it's the over, the over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with a jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. <laughs> Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. <laughs> I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man Ooh. a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way. As he's at the 10, 5, touchdown! Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines. And he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown. Broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break. And we're back with the post-game show. We just witnessed the Coronado Islanders claiming their second consecutive CIF Division IV soccer crown. The boys defeated the Francis Parker Lancers 2 to nothing in a hard-fought defensive game. Congratulations go out to both teams. They worked hard, and I know Freshman, Francis Parker, you know, they're getting, they're yeah, handing out all of their awards right now, and second place awards, they need to be proud of themselves, Junior, but having been on that end of it before, Eric it's it's kind of hard to swallow. So uh, congratulations to both teams, and especially the Islanders, 12. both boys and girls. They're going to have a fun Scott. bus ride back over the bridge, carrying their home, their trophies, Junior, 13, putting them in a trophy case. So, Shane Tommy. Matthews. What do you think of what we saw today? Yeah, it was it was an impressive, uh, impressive showing by Coronado. Uh, both coaching staffs for both the men and the women showed how ball control and discipline is really the key to success. And obviously, defense wins championships. So you can see that through the midfielders that uh, Coronado had, their their range of capabilities from Ryan Peterson. Uh, being up and, and, and scoring those two goals to uh, Orozco being back and just being all over the field. Uh, his height advantage and, and their skills were just the, the, the deciding factor in this game. Um, as, these, as these awards are given out, we got to stress congratulations to both teams. Patrick, uh, Francis Parker had a great, great season, and we're, uh, we're looking forward to seeing them back here soon. Yeah, and, and it was an impressive showing by both schools. They, these teams, both all these kids just worked so hard. Their conditioning was good. Coaching was great. And these were two solid defensive teams coming in. It was just going to be a matter of which defense uh, gave just a little bit. And in this case, Francis Parker allowed just a couple of goals, and that's all it takes. And uh, Coronado was able to hang on and maintain control of this game and keep – Keep Francis Parker from having too many opportunities to score, and even on the ones that uh, Francis Andy Parker Trophy Lancers did get, uh, the defense turned them away. So Do great job by both teams, but unfortunately there can only be one winner, and today it's the Coronado Islanders, the CIF Division IV Boys Soccer Championships for 2012. And today's CIF San Diego TV Player of the Game goes to Ryan Peterson for his two goals and his overall. Uh, his his hard-fought battle that he was playing, he was all over the field, and we want to congratulate Ryan Peterson 
for being selected for the CIF San Diego.tv Player of the Game. Yeah, great job by Ryan. He, of course, will certainly tell him that tell us that uh, he couldn't have done it by himself. All of these guys are team players, but Peterson definitely had a great game. A couple of both the goals in the game went to Peterson, and he also played some good defense. So great job, Ryan Peterson. Congratulations, and congratulations once again to the Coronado Island Islanders and their division championship, uh, the boys' division four soccer championship here in San Diego and we thank you so much for joining us we look forward to the next game coming up next we've got the La Costa Canyon versus Westview in the girls division two championship that's just about an hour away so don't stray from your monitors join us for that game and uh, championship Saturday continues right here on San CIF San Diego TV